Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. Wow, Thomcraft sure is scary, and welcome to Ultimate Alchemy Recap Super Shorts. Why is there a max size Thomcraft Rift in this chunk? Why does this chunk have 30,000 flux in it? All these answers and more in this episode, or possibly the next one. Before we talk about how this rift got here, though, we have other things to discuss. Like, for example, this lovely little Thomcraft automation system. All of those carpenters in a stack over there. The flux rips that we inadvertently let into our base, and more. It is a nice fact TM about this mod pack that it allows you to use a carpenter to combine various Essentia files to get more complicated Essentia files. This is good because you need every single essence in Thomcraft in order to make nether stars. Once you have your first nether star, that is. And if you intend to automate true clay, which is an extra challenge you can do in this mod pack that we plan to do, you need to be able to automate nether stars. Unfortunately, getting these files in the first place is not so easy. The only way to fill up a file with essence in Thomcraft is to right-click on a warded jar. And the only way to fill up those warded jars in the first place that I know of is to melt objects for Essentia in an Essentia smeltery. Thankfully, of course, we've automated the Thomcraft Air, Fire, Earth, Water, Order, and Entropy crystals using a Rune of Balance in Alfheim. Each of those crystals contains 15 of their base essence and 10 vitrium. Which means they're a pretty solid and efficient way to get a lot of each of the six basic essences. So if you want to get a lot of files of the base essences, like we have in our system, you want to melt down a lot of crystals. Each 10 Essentia is worth one file. Sorry, one moment while I grant myself all Thomcraft research in this special recap world, just so that I can show you Essentia in the jars. Wow, I sure love warp. I also love having a bunch of boxes at the top right go in and out with whooshing noises. Eh, turns out all I needed was goggles of revealing. I probably shouldn't have given myself all that research in warp, but maybe you'll see some fun warp effects during this video, like me and Arch experienced over and over and over again. Now, what's the issue with filling up so many warded jars with all of the Essentia from so many crystals like Arch and I did early on? What bit us in the ass so hard? Well, the basic Essentia smeltery turns 20% of all smelted Essentia into flux and dumps it directly into the atmosphere. But as it turns out, processing dozens of Thomcraft crystals, each of which is worth 25 Essentia, well, that releases at least four flux into the air with every crystal processed. Flux rifts are formed when the flux in the bar at the top left of the screen reaches the 75% mark. So it has to do with how much Vs is in the chunk and how much flux is in the chunk. Flux does leak into nearby chunks, so that can help stabilize your flux amount early on. But if you zoom really close on the number you see right now, you'll notice that 270 Essentia of Vs is enough to fill it up halfway, so you only need about 100 or so flux to start a flux rift in this chunk. And that's what happened. There are, however, ways to mitigate this. Ways that we did not think of doing until it bit us in the ass. Before we go into those, let me fill you in again on the basic details of how the Essentia smeltery works. You put in items into the top, and then it melts them down into Essentia, which appears in this purple bar on the left. The smeltery dumps that Essentia into any arcane Alembics above it. You can have up to seven Alem- you, well, you can have lots of Alembics. We had seven initially. But now we only have two, because once the Essentia is in the Alembics, we use these filling Essentia transfusers. Let me show you how pretty they look. I'll put a fire crystal into this smeltery, and once it melts down, we'll see that Essentia starts floating out of the transfusers and into the jars. These transfusers work in a 16 by 16 I, by 16 box in front of the direction that they're facing. So any warded jars back here, like this vitrium jar for example, will not get filled by the transfuser. Only these jars will. You can also attach transfusers to Essentia tubes, which will take Essentia from Alembics. But tubes can only hold one type of Essentia at a time, just so you know. There are various ways to speed up the smeltery. You can upgrade it to a Thalmium smeltery or a Void Metal Essentia smeltery. And you can also get Auxiliary Slurry Pumps to speed it up. You can actually reduce some of the flux output by your smeltery by attaching these auxiliary venting ports to the sides of your smeltery. The first one cuts away a third of the flux and turns it into quote-unquote harmless steam. The second one has diminishing returns, but we added two just in case. 
We also, before we got the Void Mandal Essential Smell 3, upgraded our Essential Smell 3 to a Thaumium Essential Smell 3, which not only works twice as fast, only turns 10% of Smelted Essentia into Flux. Since we were initially turning 20% of our Essentia into Flux, upgrading it to a Thaumium Smell 3 halved our Flux. However, we wanted to go even further and get the Void Metal Essentia Smeltery, which only turns 5% of Smelted Essentia into Flux. Pretty good, but actually not necessary, which we'll talk about later, but I want to discuss this anyway because I think it's neat. To get the Void Metal Essentia Smeltery, um, well, first of all, you need a lot of V, so we used a V battery, or no, a workbench charger on this arcane workbench to draw V from around the area so that we could make something that required a lot more than 200 V. Oh look, I'm getting blurred vision because of my warp. Anyway, Void Metal Essential Smeltery. What made this such a doozy? The Advanced Alchemical Construct, which requires a Primordial Pearl, or a Primordial Moat, which is like one-eighth of the pearl. But how do you get Primordial Pearls? There's no recipe for them. Well, it turns out... Primordial Pearls are a rare drop that you get when you collapse a large Flux Rift from Thalmcraft. What do I mean by Collapse of Flux Rift? Well, at the beginning of the episode, we saw a very large Flux Rift that is many, many, many chunks away from our base. Flux Rifts, like I said, are generated when there's too much Flux in a chunk. But the more Flux there is in a chunk when the Flux Rift is generated, the bigger the Rift will be. And if the Rift starts small, you can grow it really fast by dumping enormous amounts of items into it. There is a maximum size, I believe, of like 16 blocks in one dimension or something like that, I don't know. No, that's not true, but there is a max size. It is possible to delete flux rifts by collapsing them using a causality collapser. When you collapse a flux rift, you get void seeds. The more void seeds you get, it said, the higher the chance that you'll get a primordial pearl. The number of void seeds is equal to the chance of getting a primordial pearl. Collapsing a max size flux rift of the type you saw in that chunk gives you 16 Void Seeds, and therefore you get a 16% chance of getting a Primordial Pearl. When we collapsed our Flux Rift, we got, well, it took us a few collapses to get it. We got a Primordial Moat, which is one eighth of a Primordial Pearl, and that was enough, however, to create the alchemical construct for our Void Metal Essential Smeltery. It was a bit of a doozy to get this Causality Collapser, though. Um, the main issue with the Causality Collapser is the Morphic Resonator, which requires Rare Earths, and there's no recipe for Rare Earths. But you can get rare earths by smelting ores in an infernal furnace. You get a higher chance of these drops when you smelt native clusters, which are an ore in a cauldron with metallum and ordo. The fastest ore to make is tin ore, because it casts very quickly um, in a casting basin, compared to iron, which is what I was using before Arch took over and did better things. 20 seconds, seriously? Compared to three? That was my fault. Oh look, it's another effect of warp. You sometimes release random taint into the world, which can cause your blocks to... Taint can spread and cause diseases in your area. I will delete this somehow. Okay, and now I'm getting attacked by a damn slime. We're in peaceful mode now, because that is not allowed. Anyway, we'll just leave this unsightly little tower in the middle of our base, because great. The Infernal Furnace, which is a multi-block made of netherrack, obsidian, a lava bucket, and iron bars, and Salus Mundus to activate it, runs on Vis in the chunk. Um, and since we were planning to smelt dozens of clusters, it ended up being like hundreds of clusters, to get all the rare earth ore we needed, we decided to put it in this faraway chunk where we could consume the V without worrying about the V very far away in our base. You just stick a cluster in the top, and it'll smelt it. You can also do ores, but basically, once it releases its product, it might give you rare earth ore as well. The rest of the causality collapser was pretty straightforward. Um, you can just make it using typical Thaumcraft um, alchemy. But we did have to set up infusion. Infusion involves a lot of arcane stone, a small multi-block, and the requirement of making the infusion stable. These arcane pedestals hold ingredients that go into the runic infusions. Having the ped pedestals organized in a symmetric way, as well as having various thomic paraphernalia organized in a symmetrical way, improves the stability of your infusions, which can be an issue if you have an infusion which has an instability of very high in orange letters. Thankfully, this setup was more than stable enough for that very high instability of the causality collapser. To get the Alienus, we used Ender Pearls broken down in the Essentia Smeltery, and to get the Vicium, we just used Flux Crystals that you get from the Root of Balance in the Alpine Portal. 
Next up, I have some footage for you from our playtime. You'll notice that just like the paraphernalia, we have all of the ingredients organized in a way that most of them are opposite each other in some way. You start the craft by right-clicking with a casting gauntlet or other casting tool. It'll start to collect, um, uh, it'll start to collect Essentia from the nearby warden jars. Once it's collected all of the Essentia, it'll start collecting the items. The items may drop off the pedals in this process, so you should be ready to pick them back up. And boom, we have a causality collapser. I missed the sound, sorry. Then warning ahead, I'm about to provide you footage of us using the causality collapser to collapse a rift. Hopefully I lowered the volume during my editing process. It's possible I did not. Now. We had to do that just about way too many times, but eventually we got our Primordial Pearl and our Void Metal Essentia Smeltery, which I'll now tell you about how you do not need. Because our blessed mod pack creator, RW Tema, anticipated the need to automate this process and release a lot of Flux into the air and gave us the ability to automate Flux Cleanup. Flux Cleanup requires two basic building requirements, a Flux Condenser, which is the base item for a quote-unquote multi-block, and a Flux Condenser Lattice. You can add multiple Flux Condenser Lattices to speed up the cleaning process of a Flux Condenser. But the Flux Condenser uses Essentia to remove Flux from the atmosphere and turn it into Vichium Essence. And the more Lattices you add, the more expensive that is in terms of Essentia, even though you at least get to remove Flux faster. Thankfully, however, we are in possession of our favorite thing, Acceleration Wands, which speed up the Flux Condenser, so it uses up Essentia really fast, but only at a cost of 5 per Flux. And since the Void Metal Essentia Smeltery, or even just the Thaumium Essentia Smeltery with um, Auxiliary Venting Ports, produces less flux than one flux for every five essentia, i.e. the thaumium smeltery at 90% produces one flux for every nine essentia, as long as you use five of those essentia to remove that flux, you will never make any flux in your chunk, and that's why we have no flux in this chunk except for that 0.9, please ignore it. Because the process of breaking down crystals in the Essentia Smeltery makes enormous amounts of Vitrium Essence, we shove our Vitrium Essence into this warded jar to fuel the Flux Condenser. With one venting port and a Thaumium Essentia Smeltery, only 6% of your Essentia is converted into Flux. That's 1.6 points of Flux for every 25 points of Essentia which is 8.3 points of Essentia in the Flux Condenser, and since every crystal creates 10 Vitreous, that Vitreous is, on average, enough. But of course, using an extra um, venting port and using the Void Metal Essentia Smeltery will reduce that number even more and improve your efficiency, but you do not need to do that. The one hiccup with the Flux Condenser system you need to be aware of is that the lattice will occasionally get quote-unquote clogged, when it gets clogged, you can right-click on it with an Essentia filter from Thomcraft to replace it, and very graciously, RW Tema has given that recipe as a carpenter recipe, indicating that he wanted us to automate this flux cleanup process all along. It requires silverwood planks, and you can get silverwood by pouring silver on wood in a casting machine or in a fluid transposer, which is what we used. A couple side facts about putting files into these mechanical users for them to use on your warded jars. We use Ender.io limited item filters um, to place eight files into the mechanical users at a time. If you only put one file into the mechanical user and it right clicks on the warded jar and it fills itself up with that Essentia, if you don't extract immediately using Ender.io, it will empty that file back into the warded jar and it'll just do this over and over again and make an enormous amount of noise. And it's kind of annoying, but also it's a fun sound, but you know, not good for recording purposes. But if you use upper left slot only and have 8 files, you'll never get a full file in the top left slot. We are supplying those files to the system using an interface from refined storage that supplies glass files. This interface also tells the system to keep itself stocked with all 6 essentias, and we have recipes in this crafter that convert 1 entropy crystal into 1 file of Prodigio Essentia. You can pretty much guarantee that each file is going to- each crystal is going to give you at least 1 file. But as you put multiple crystals in, you'll get a couple bonus files. Bonus files! 
we use that same system to fill up um, our files with the Vicium. And we export Vitreous Essentia into this mechanical user to fill up the water jar. One last tidbit is how we use all of those Vicium files, because we don't just need a bunch of Vicium lurking in our um, system when we can turn it into its more useful bases. So we um, use a centrifugal separator that automatically gets an export of Vicium files whenever there are more than 10 Vicium files in the network. Vicium gets processed down into Prodicio and Precontactio. Precontactio can turn into Potentia and Air, and Potentia turns into Ordo and Ignis. So four Essentias from your Vicium. And if you upgrade your centrifugal separator to signal them and add three auxiliary sieves, the chances of secondary of those outputs go from 50% to a lot percent. I'm not really sure how much percent. Someone in the comments can probably tell us how much auxiliary sieves increase the chances of a secondary product. To filter the essences and make sure that the Vicium gets completely broken down without messing with the essences already in our system, we extract everything from the centrifugal separator into this chest, and then we use an item filter on this interface so that files extracted from the chest only go into the interface if they are not Precontatio or Potentia. Precontatio and Potentia go into this centrifugal separator to get reprocessed, but all the base essences go into this interface. Just one note, files are de defined in Thomcraft based on their NBTs, so you need to make sure you use an advanced item filter that matches NBT. The last thing I should mention is how you get Void Metal, which is what we used for our Void Metal Essentia smeltery. You can get that from Void Seeds in a Crucible. And once you get Void Seeds, either from collapsing Flux Rifts or from the miniature Void Seeds that you get from cutting grass in Content Tweaker, you can use a Phytogenic Insulator to raise those Void Seeds and get more of them. The only way to actually get more Void Seeds, although I suppose you can use Auxiliary Seeds, is to use Fluxed Phytogrow, which is rich Phytogrow in an Energetic Infuser, which is Sawdust and Fertilizer. Sawdust and Fertilizer is the best route we found, because Sawdust is just wood in a pulverizer, and you can get Fertilizer from Appetite, which comes from, in this mod pack, Bone Meal in an Energetic Infuser. And Bone Meal is automatable, at least once you've automated Bog Earth, which we have not, but one day. Finally, let's talk about this enormous stack of carpenters. This enormous stack of carpenters exists because there are 32 carpenter alchemy recipes to make the 32 essences, and each carpenter has to be programmed individually with a particular recipe. So we just bit the bullet and made 32. This stone slab marks how many more carpenters we have left to fill up. So far we've filled up most of them, and eventually we'll have all of them and we'll be able to make nether stars using the files generated by Carpenter Alchemy. Our patterns involve a glass file, files of the two base essences, and Aqua Salus Mundus. Anyway, this episode has gone very long, and that's because we did a lot of things in order to deal with the problems that we caused, but the mo if you want to avoid spawning flux rifts in your base, just set up this flux process early, and don't process ginormous amounts of crystals in your arcane alembic way too early, just to simplify your alchemy processes. Get a flux condenser and get it fast, you do have to do some research to get that though. You also need some research to get the void metal essentia smelter. But anyway, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, well, we can't really accept feedback because we have finished all of these episodes and they're being uploaded because we did them all. But if you have any comments for viewers who might not know things about Thomcraft and need, for example, a video to go to, or if you have suggestions for how to do the Thomcraft part of the mod pack, or just anything in general, please post them in the comments for other players of this mod pack. In the next episode, we'll talk about getting diamonds, because we finally realized that we just needed the machinist from Immersive Engineering, which we had gotten so many times. So I'm sorry for misleading you in past episodes, but the machinist was the villager you needed to get the improved arc furnace graphite electrodes. Again, we'll talk about that next episode. Bye!